Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our all-age worship service, the second Sunday in Advent, and our toy service. We have much pleasure on this special day to welcome our town mayor, Bruce Davidson, and his consort, Elaine McManus. Thank you for joining us. We do have a couple of announcements. If I could ask Kathy to come, please. We just write it here, we all read it, and the money you save on cards will be donated to charity. Now, charity that we chose this year is the DUC Disasters Emergency Committee, then they decide where it's best spent. So, there will be a pot put out there later to put the money in, but it's good. It's got a last of the time. It's going to be um, underneath the, uh, the little cherry blossom tree. So, we'll just Thank you. And Claire, can you come and ask? It's heading to Panto time. Oh, oh, yeah. I knew someone would be on for On the, I want to say 14th, my 15th January, 15th of January, Sunday afternoon at half past four, we have booking tickets to go and see Centre Stage's performance of Sleeping Beauty, if I can get the right panto at least. Um, Jackie is starring, uh, along with Chloe Ann, and others from church that you will know as well, uh, Jackie and Katie, and uh, Jay and Jody, lots of people you will know. Uh, they're putting in so much time and effort prepping for this, and it's going to be spectacular. We've not been as a church, obviously, for a few years. They've not had a chance to do one for a few years. So if you want to join us, we have got an amazing discount down to £8.50 a ticket. Sunday Club Children, we are paying for. Please see me today if you would like to join us. It is not just for the children, it's for everybody. Um, and I will get you on the list. You don't need to pay me today. Um, we can sort that out nearer the time, but please do come and see me. Also, Sunday Club Children, please see me for a party invite after the service as well. Too much to go on, isn't there at the moment? Too much excitement. <laughs> Um, we'd also like to thank everyone involved in our live nativity yesterday with Churches Together. Um, it was absolutely wonderful, it was a success, and I think everyone who came really, really enjoyed themselves. So thank you for all who were involved. And lastly, I'd like to remind you not to forget about our family carol service. That's next Sunday, December 11th at 5 p.m., and all are welcome to join us. I'd now like to pass you over to our minister, Reverend Peter Goodall, to lead us in our service today. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your warm welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And a warm welcome to those who are watching later at our recording at home. It's good to have you among us as well today. Well, it's an exciting time, isn't it? We're here today on this toy service where we bring toys for families in need this Christmas. It's wonderful that we are able to do this as a church year on year and we know it's always appreciated and this year needed more than ever. Our church is looking very Christmassy, I'm sure you'll agree, and we do thank Jacqueline and her team who set up our Christmas tree and decorations and to Mike Webb, who has set up our nativity scene once again. It's greatly appreciated. Lissa is going to be the first of our children involved today, and she's going to lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, on this day of giving, we thank you for every gift you send, your blessings without number, and your love which never ends. Sorry for when we are selfish and sorry for so much grief. Help us to remember and share with all in need. 
lift our hearts before you and await to hear your word. We worship and adore you, our great and mighty Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to um, join our voices together with worship. I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing to our Lord, our God. this time aside today, this hour, to focus on you alone. Accept our praises this morning, we ask. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in worship. means that we're lighting two candles today, so I invite those who are lighting and reading our responses, which will be on the screen, to join us. Thank you, Gloria and family. Thank you very much. 
on the Christmas countdown has well and truly begun. And in case you didn't realise, keep calm, it's only three weeks until Christmas. <laughs> How are you doing in terms of preparation? What? Quite well, good, good, yes. And what sort of things are you looking forward to? What's still to come? Have a chat with the person next to you and talk about your countdown to Christmas, the things that are in your diary, the things that you're looking forward to, the things you've done, the things that you still need to do. Just have a chat with your neighbour. I think. Oh. Is that 
watching school nativities and concerts and plays with actually having a proper audience this year. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it was right. effective, wasn't it, last year? We were still coping with Omicron, um, so yeah, that's going to be exciting for all the children doing their plays with their parents and grandparents there. What fun. Great. Oh, wow. Thank you all for those wonderful responses, um, for the things that you're getting ready for, the things that are in your diary. And, you know, we think we spend quite some time getting ready for Christmas, but think back to that very first Christmas. How long did it take for people to get ready for what God was going to do? Not just days or weeks or months, not even just years or decades, but centuries, a long time, hundreds of years waiting in that time between the Old Testament and the New Testament, between what the prophets were saying about God doing a new thing, a new work of comfort in our hearts, uh, a new way being prepared. That God was going to be coming among us, that the Virgin would give birth to a child. We waited so many years for that, and God was getting his people ready. And one person who was very much involved in helping people to get ready for this new arrival, we've talked about new arrivals, the new arrival of God in people's lives, was John the Baptist. And we're going to be thinking about John and his ministry today. And we're going to watch a presentation of Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. And this will be on the screen. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So quite a figure there, isn't he? John the Baptist with his camel hair clothes and his diet of locusts and honey. Dressed a little like Elijah from the days of old, coming with the same message, get ready. And Craig is now going to read to us um, a poem that's been written by Amy Robinson. And this helps us to unpack the message of John the Baptist and let us receive it in our hearts today. John the Wrecking Ball by Amy Robinson John the Baptist, John the Bulldozer, 
John the Wrecking Ball. Leveling mountains, laying roads, shouting out his call. No time left, the Saviour comes, get ready, one and all. Prepare the way, make straight the path, and fill the valleys in. Knock down the mountains of your doubts, make smooth the soil of sin. The Lord is coming, shout it out, his glory will be seen. John the Baptist, wild and hairy, eats what he can find. Not one to tiptoe around the truth, he says what's on his mind. No time left, the kingdom comes, now don't get left behind. Prepare the way, make straight the path, for we are grass and flowers. We die and fall, but our Lord lives, and now he comes in power. Fear not, Judah, shout the good news, his words will live forever. John the Baptist calls the people, hear the words I say, turn from sin and be baptised, wash your wrongs away. No time left, for that long longed for Lord is here today, today. Thank you, Craig. I was really struck reading that poem, John the Wrecking Ball. That was a really powerful image to me. I thought, well, what is a wrecking ball? Let's have a look. We're going to show um, a short video on screen of a wrecking ball in action for you to enjoy. <laughs> so here we are we're on a, a building site, and here's a crane with a really long chain and a really heavy weight of the wrecking ball on the end of it. And there it is at work. Um, this is in Wichita, in Kansas, uh, in the United States a few years ago. And here we see an old office building being demolished, ready to make way for something new. So it's got to be all clear, it's all got to be demolished. Look, there it goes. Who would like that job? <laughs> it's a lot of skill. And look, here's a pincer, a bit like a T-Rex, biting at the building, <coughs> pulling it down. Great skill involved, and lots of people watching. Would you like to be there watching that go? Yeah, yeah. There it goes again, slow motion, re action replay of the building coming down, being flattened, ready for something new and something better. John the Baptist as a wrecking ball. Well, he certainly came with noise and with thunder in the desert. And his message certainly packed a punch as well. And he calls to us today as that wrecking ball. John cries, make everything new. Make the road smooth and straight. Let God in. Let God in to your heart. Let God into your world. And you know, I say, when I speak of God's power at work like that, it's not the power of force in us, but it's the power of love. It's always the power of his love at work in our hearts. And God desires to come in with his love and make that clean sweep in our hearts. To clear, to clear a holy space. To clear a holy space where hurt and cruelty have no place. To clear lives of hatred and despair, to come in to make things better, to be that wrecking ball, to dismantle injustice, to demolish discrimination, to bulldoze bigotry, to give hypocrisy the heave-ho, to hammer 
hard-heartedness, to tear down any indifference to the needs that are around us, to smash selfishness, to level the obstacles to life in all its fullness that Jesus came to bring. So this is what Advent is about for us, to clear a space, to clear the wreckage, to rebuild our relationship with God. He's building a new kingdom and a new king is on his way. He is the way maker. John the Baptist was the forerunner. He also made the way. But Jesus came and made the road as wide as it could be. He levelled the ground and said, come to me. So as we respond now in our worship, let us open our hearts to this way maker, this God who's moving in our hearts today. Let's continue in worship.
service, we make a way. We make a way for families at Christmas, where perhaps they can see no way for Christmas Day and the giving of gifts. Today, gifts are brought as a practical way of saying, God cares and we care. God loves you and we love you. So we're going to bring our toys forward and myself and Bruce and Elaine are going to help me to receive and to uh, unpack the toys from the bags and to place them on the table. And um, we're going to do it this way that uh, first of all uh, those on the left here will bring their gifts up first and then those in the centre and then those on the right over here will bring their gifts forward. And as we do so we're going to be led in some Christmas songs of worship and praise. So let us continue in worship and in giving.
to be aware of that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Good boys morning. and girls. How are we this morning? Is it times like this I'm really, really proud to be the mayor of Haverhill? Just think back already this weekend. The tree lighting, the walking nativity, the ice rink. Who was there last night? A few thousand people came to see the fireworks. Wow, they were really good. But thank you for inviting myself and my consort Elaine today. Do we really need to give all these to social services? Can't I have some? <laughs> now seriously, I think the generosity of this congregation is amazing. So yes, on behalf of the social services, this is a fantastic achievement and I thank you very much. <coughs> and I echo that appreciation of your generosity today. We're going to dedicate these wonderful gifts that are being given now and Hannah and Katie are going to lead our dedication and then a prayer for others in need today.
Thank you, Hannah and Katie, for leading our time of prayer. Well, we've almost come to the end of our morning service, but just a reminder that our prayer ministry team are available today and they're wearing the green lanyards. They would love to pray with you. There's a bring and share lunch after our service, so please do feel free to stay, even if uh, you haven't intended to, there is always enough for all. And our Advent study continues on Thursday evening, and you're very welcome to still come along Thursday evening in the lounge at half past seven. And then lastly, our carol service next Sunday at 5pm will be followed by refreshments. It's been good to have you with us today. We hope that what we've shared together has just helped you to take that next step on this three-week journey now towards Christmas. And that perhaps God has just opened that door of your heart and mine a little bit wider today. And maybe in this week ahead, continue that work of getting us ready, of demolishing the things that need to be taken away in order that Christ can come to us in a clear and straight way at Christmas. So let's close our morning worship with a very well-known carol. Yes, Bless us and surprise us as we
Hopefully, you get forwards to your birthdays. Amen. Amen. Please proceed.